Are you awake, guys? Did you have your coffee? Did you have a snack? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, don't worry if you're tired. My presentation is going to be the last one for today. But anyway, I hope you're going to enjoy it. My name is Francis Schneider, and I work as a software developer here at Flixbus. And apart from that, uh, I'm a really huge fan of cloud microservices, DevOps, and basically everything that's related to a modern software development. Why microservices? Uh, well, because it's everywhere. Uh, I have many friends, many colleagues who are talking about it, but not so many of them are actually doing that. And I wanted to change that. I have never done microservices either, and I wanted to try it out. I want to make an experiment if I'm able to create my own microservices, my own babies. Why? Because I was a little bit driven by the hype, <laughs> because everyone was talking about it, and I wasn't um, I, wasn't, I didn't want to be uh, behind because lots of people think that this is the future. Prasimir would say that the Google Go is the future. <laughs> but uh, everyone is a little bit uh, driven by the hype because that's how it, how it works, especially in IT. There are so many new stuff and I wanted to try it out just for fun, just an experiment. Um, if you or if I wanted to start with microservices, I had to start some research, some, some digging. And the first thing that I had to deal with was the thing that, call, that was called service discovery. If you say microservices, you cannot really do it in some lousy servers that are in your basement. And you have to count with the cloud. And cloud is a, it's a beast. It's a living thing. And if your microservices are running in the cloud, in some virtual machine or real physical servers, you cannot really rely on IP services. IP services are bad, you know? Don't use them. Especially if you want to establish a really good communication between microservices. That's actually the thing why the service discovery actually even exists. Instead of IP addresses, you use the service name. That's awesome. I'm a software developer. I, don't, I have basically nothing about the, the network infrastructure. So I'm pretty glad that such a thing exists. And I tried it out. I created my own microservices using service discovery. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is actually just just few of them. I picked them randomly uh, out of the internet. Um, but luckily, I could set up some constraints. I didn't want to try them everything. It was just be a nightmare. It would be a hell. I wanted to use something that works pretty well with Spring Boot and Java. Why? because I like it. We are using it in Flixbus, we are using it in our team, and I thought that's going to be benefici beneficial, not, not for me, but also for the team, because, you know, the motto of this uh, conference, learn, uh, gra uh, grow, share, so I want to share the stuff. And I found like a two winners, or like a two alpha males uh, in the internet, uh, that works pretty well, and it's really easy to integrate this Spring Boot. The first one is called Netflix Eureka, as you might see, Netflix, that's another buzzword. So you might uh, get an impression that it's going to be really good. And the second one is uh, Console from HashiCorp, also a big player on the you know, cloud development. What I wanted to do, I wanted to integrate it. My Spring, Spring with microservices with those, Spring dis uh, with those service discovery tools. And I wanted to have, to have it like easily. I want to have some health check because that's really essential. Uh, you, you want to have your microservices healthy. And I want to have some UI because, you know, I don't want, always want to work on, on console. I want to have some, like, really nice user interface where I can check where are the microservices, how they look like, and if they are healthy. Stuff like that. Really simple stuff. So I started with Eureka. Um, if you really want to do that, you will always need something like a client and server. I started with the server. And I was really surprised how easy is that. Um, I opened my IntelliJ, uh, started with Spring IO initializer, everything was generated. And the only thing that I had to do, like create a mine class where I start the application and annotate it, uh, I'm not sure, doesn't matter, uh, annotate it with enable Eureka server. Okay, that's cool. I started out and it failed. There were some errors in the log, like, okay. Let's time, time, time to open the manual. 
<laughs> and, I fr I, and I found out, ah, okay, if you want to run the Eureka server, then you have to say, okay, I shouldn't re uh, register myself with Eureka if there's no Eureka. <laughs> so basically with just two lines, I say, I'm the server. Do not register me and don't use any registry because I'm the first guy. And the other thing is like uh, the pod, the server pod, uh, under the application is going to be run. It's really easy, like three, four lines. Wow. Now it's time to integrate it with the application. I got my microservices. The same thing. I open the IntelliJ, do some clicks. The IntelliJ generated the application. Then anything what I had to do, one line. Annotate the main, uh, main class, enable discovery client. I start it out, and it works. No errors. So I was wondering, is it really working? I opened uh, the web browser. I typed just localhost and the port 8761. And I saw this kind of, I would say, sad user UI. Um, it, it fulfilled the purpose. I can see the, the microservices. I, I restarted it twice, so I could see like a two records. So I guess, yeah, that works. But to be honest, I was looking forward to a console because a few months ago I had a DevOps conference and lots of people were talking about it as a new big thing. So I decided let's try it out a bit, you know, a bit more difficult, not just some random generated shit. Let's try something meaningful. So I decided I'm going to create just two microservices and those two microservices will be communicate to each other through the service discovery. And I named them like a history service and statistic service. Uh, the history service, just really simple thing. It was just storing some data that you could create and it was representing the, the changes of user. Like the user clicked on this button, the user changed this attribute, the user logged himself out, stuff like that. And the second services is kind of like depending on the, 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 the first one. And I called it like a statistic service. And in this service, I wanted to know how many times, for example, the user clicked on that specific button. Let's, let's call it analytical reasons, okay? I had my databases, and it's not visible, that should be on MySQL, and the other one was using just simple Mongo. Everything was running quite smoothly on my localhost. Then I had to set up my console. As I heard before, I had this conference, lots of people were talking about it, and this is the way how I set up the console. It looks a bit terrifying, I have scripts for everything, you know? And it's actually pretty easy. Uh, I like Docker, and luckily, the console, the service discovery tool, runs in Docker. So I just go a little bit, and I found, hey, just with two, three command uh, switchers, or just configuration switches, you can run it. So I did it. I have, I'm using this uh, script almost every second day when I play with the console. It started, it's running, cool. Now, I got those two services, history service and a statistic service. What I had to do, I will just, again, do some configuration stuff. That's, that's basically the modern stuff on development. You don't really code that much, you have to configure it. And everything what I had to do, I will just had to put two lines in the configuration file, uh, either or application properties or bootstrap properties, if you are aware with the Spring Boot framework and the configuration path. And that's it, it worked. Like that, it's awesome. Uh, actually, the first line is not even necessary. If you are really working or testing your stuff on localhost, then the Spring Boot application automatically thinks, that, okay, you're probably localhost, so that's gonna be the first choice how to try it out. The second part is actually not needed as well, but if you want to have like a multiple instances of the service, then you have to define the instance ID. Because it might happen if you want to really scale your services that you, have, you want to have multiple instances of it. Like let's say lots of people are storing the data into the history service. So you need like a load balancing. So you, you're gonna need mo more instances of it. That's the reason how you achieve it. You will just say, okay, the instance ID is gonna be the name of the service plus some random value. How it looks like, like this, white and green. I like green. So this is like the user interface that the console providing. And you could see the console registered himself. 
that's that's a big difference uh, between Eureka and uh, and console. And my two microservices, Charter Statistics Server and Charter History Service. As you might see, is it visible that there is a word for passing? Yeah. yeah? That means that there are four checks. Like console is providing health checks. It it does periodically, and you can even configure it. And that's <coughs> for me as a developer that. Uh, really seek for quality and rela uh, reliability of the microservices, that's an essential. I want to have a quality health check of the microservices. And what's really cool about the console, you can define your health check. You can define the time to live. You can define the response time. And if the response time is you know, too much, it's too long, then the Docker said, hey, this microservice is not healthy. I'm not going to make it public. I'm not going to give the instance ID or the URL where, where, the, where the instance is stored to anyone because it's unhealthy. That's really cool. So this is the way how you can actually define your, your health check. Again, configuration. You didn't really code that much. Uh, what I actually did, I just created a new REST template. I call it my health. I created a new, new get method. And I said, yeah, just write some stuff perform some action and it's really good because you can actually perform like a sanity test. It doesn't, uh, you can have a health check that will check, just check periodically if the service is alive, if, if it's responding uh, that the service is up, but you cannot be really sure if the application is really running, if all the business logic behind works correctly. So that's the reason uh, why you can actually define your health check. You can even say, yeah, do it every 10 seconds or do it every minute because you don't want to uh, put the service under pressure. So easy, wow. And you can see here, I have two identical services, or actually almost identical, but the, the first one is using the pre-built one. Like you can say, I'm not gonna define any health check and the console automatically knows where, where to call, what to perform to, to gain the healthness of the service. The second one, uh, ah yeah, it works here. The second one is my own. I define it my own health check. And also say, hey, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> so I'm ready to be served. This is like a small comparison um, that I did. To be honest, I'm much more excited or uh, I think the console is more robust and can work with the other languages and other frameworks. The Eureka has better integration with Spring and better fits to the, to the Spring environment and the, the whole homogeneous uh, environment. Apart from that, it basically does the same thing. You can, you can, you can really define also your health checks, but only the basics one. The, the console one has much more complex tools or enables to perform much more complex checks. You can, you can execute the scripts or stuff like that. I, find, I find it really, really useful. You can even define like who's going to have the access for that microservice. You can, you can have like a, in an extreme case like a Google has or Amazon, you have hundreds of microservices, but you don't want them, all of them to communicate to each other. You can define like a group of the services who are allowed to talk to each other. That's also possible. I wasn't able to find uh, this kind of feature for Eureka. Other thing that I really, really like is key value store. So you can actually replace your configuration management in your app application. You can annotate your property in your class uh, with key value store that's provided by the discovery. And every time when you define a new key or a new value or you change it directly in console, it's going to be propagated. You don't have to restart your application. That's really cool. Uh, not, not so many tools can do that. There are configuration tools like Puppet, stuff like that. But those stuff are pretty heavy. And if you need just a simple configuration management, this is the thing that you could use. There are better stuff, I guess. There are worse stuff, but I really like it. I find it really neat. It makes my life, or my software developer life, much more easier. Um, what's the conclusion? <laughs> to be honest, uh, this kind of stuff are pretty easy. Like, everyone can do that uh, after a few hours of Googling and studying the manuals. Uh, and I did it just to prove 
myself, that I can do it, that I can create really my own microservices, that I'm going to learn stuff. And to be honest, I didn't really learn that much about microservices. I actually learned much more because I didn't just create the microservices. I was, I was using Kubernetes because I, was, I wanted to have it in this uh, cloud environment. And to be honest, at the beginning, when I started like March or February, I failed. <laughs> it was a total disaster. Everything was red and nothing worked. And then I started digging. You know, I failed several times and I learned it and I found the tricks and I found the, the way how to make it work. With Kubernetes, I learned Docker. I, I learned how to set up my own Docker registry. Cool, because that's going to be connected with Kubernetes. Then I realized, OK, there is much more. I don't want to have a Docker, Docker, a Docker image with uh, my Mongo. There's something already provided AWS, so I started to learn AWS. Cool. Then I learned about the uh, infrastructure. So I, cannot, I don't have to use uh, some, some scripts that are stored in the console or just search for the history, what, what kind of command did I use that time? I learned something about the infrastructure as code, that I can set up the environment once, I can delete it, and I can rest restore it again. That's, that's really awesome. If you struggle for a certain time and nothing works, but then when you reach the point when everything works and everything is green, that's really <laughs> joyful. Uh, that's a really good feeling. This is actually the example, how it actually looked like in March, something like that. Uh, that was my first attempt. You could see my microservices are green, something was uh, green. I was trying to actually connect the console with Kubernetes. And for those of you who are aware what Kubernetes is and what can it do, you know that that's not necessary. But I didn't know that time. I had to learn it. I had to fail several times to realize, hey, Kubernetes is really cool. I don't need to deal with some external libraries like Console or Eureka or other stuff. There's, there's a service and service discovery in, integrated already in, in Kubernetes. So lesson learned. This is the current state. This is actually a screenshot of our integration environment. And I love taking care of that. Like from time to time we have a problem when we have too many images or too many applications running and we are like getting lots of resources. I like to take care of it. I like to do the cleanup. I like to uh, create the scripts that do it automatically. I like to debugging stuff. I like to look at the logs what are currently running there. And it's really fulfilling me. I really like it. Um, what I can suggest to you Try out the new stuff. It doesn't matter if it's microservices, if it's a chatbot, or it uh, doesn't matter if you do like a fancy technical interviews. Just try it out because you never know like where did uh, where where you can end up. Where did it get you? And thank you very much, guys. I hope you like it.